非常荣幸，我受大会邀请担任本场本专场《安吉游戏：中国视角论坛》的主持。呃，因为后面的时间关系，我们呃今天上午有四个演讲分享，那么我们就现在抓紧时间。Let's be quick. Without further ado, let's invite the first speaker. Director of Anji Childhood Education Research Center and champion of Anji Plays, Madam Cheng Xueqing. She will talk about the child, the teacher, the environment, the ecosystem, true play, and the potential for change. Let's welcome Madam Cheng Xueqing from Anji Childhood Education Research Center. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so pleased that you have come from all over China, all over the province, all over the world. We have come together to discuss the change for preschool education. Today, I'll talk about the child, the teacher, the environment, the ecosystem. And their interplay in true play, and what kind of changes have they brought about? There is a global crisis in early education. The most vulnerable groups do not have a chance to go to kindergartens because of wars and because of disasters. Preschool educations and preschool educators are treated as unskilled workers. They are not empowered. Our professional status is not recognized. The right of children to authentic experiences of deep learning is not recognized. But many institutions, organizations, and experts have fully understand the importance for fundamental reform. But there are many obstacles to our reform. In 2009, Anji also faced the same issue. Enrollment rate was less than 40 percent. Many teachers did not have teachers' qualification. At that time, our kindergartens did not have plays. Our kindergarten was just like a preparatory stage to primary schools. Primary school teachers believe we were not professionals in teaching knowledge at the primary school level, and parents complain that we were not teaching enough knowledge to children. At that time, we do not have. An environment that respects children's rights, especially children's rights to play. So we decided to start reform. Now, 19 years have passed since the first day we embarked on our reform. We first have primary school-like plays. We were first very utilitarian, adult design plays, plays that were not. Needed by children, fourth place. But today we have found true place that highlight the inner needs of children. When we did not have play, children look down, they look bored. This picture was taken by me about two decades ago. At that time, I saw a beautiful, brand new table, but I never knew. It was important to care about children's feeling and look into children's eyes. But when I look back at the old picture, I saw disappointment on children's face because there were no plays. Children became very disappointed. Children were bored, were fed up with forced plays. But now. Although children had some smiles on their face, it seems that they are happy. 
But let's take a closer look. Are they truly happy? They are not really joyful because they were forced to play. They were forced into a designed play, so they look very disappointed at heart. But this is our true play. This is now true play. Look at their eyes. Look at their joyful expressions. We can see children are very invested in their play. They are driven to take adventures. Children are so energized to play again, to try again, to come all over again. So, in the past 19 years of reform, we have found some very deep answers that I would like to share with you. First, the importance of policy. The local government has shouldered the important mission of deepening educational reform. 92% of our children have been enrolled in our public kindergartens. We make sure every children can enjoy government-provided public education near their homes in their neighborhood. We visited a kindergarten with 500 children. All the neighborhood kindergartens. Look the same, and they are not different from the biggest public kindergartens. Even children living on mountain tops receive more support. We have kindergarten with four children, yet they enjoy no less childhood, no less joy, in their mountain top kindergartens. We also look for new way out for children. We also look for educational reform. We would like to give the spotlight to children, but teacher should retreat from spotlight. We should stand behind and observe and study children. We should become a talker to an observer. That is why we abide by the basic principle that play is our basic curriculum. We give freedom for children to play. We allow. The process to unfold, so we can discover more about children. I would like to use the word change because we are constantly exceeding our prior conception about children. I believe every day when we observe children, we will have a refreshed understanding of children. We will come to understand the importance of play, material, the ecological system, and our educational environment. Environment and materials, from the big toys, structured materials to loose materials, open materials. Now we understand what kind of environment can really allow children to have. Agency over their place. We allow children to build their own structure during plays, emergent plays, so environment can be used to the full. That is why we provide the loosest part, the low structured part for children, using a dozen years. Inspired by childhood plays, we have studied more than a hundred different combinational materials. They are flexible, they are movable, and these plays fully respect children's hope for real life. We did not create mini toys for children. These dimensions are just like everyday object. So when children move these toys, move these loose materials, they can really feel the joy from live objects. With the support of the flexible materials, they have infinite possibilities in combining them. They can deepen their learning. Our materials are infinite. No definitive functions attached to these materials. And these are the results of our educational reform. Where、well, there is no functional limit, there is no boundary limit. Children can 
explore these materials to the maximum. Children can have the highest agency over their plays. These plays allow children to explore complex causality, causal relationships. So children can engage in deep play. They can have deep reflection, and they can have very deep and profound learning. Children use panels, ladders to play ramps. In ramp play, when children move the panels, move the rails, they build up causal relationships. And there are many different causal relationships, and that relationship is constructed. Any time in play, and just by moving those ramps, children find out about six different causal relationships, and why the tires will lose their track. Children found another causal relationship. We have fifteen thousand children interacting with all the materials, and see how many tens of thousands of causal relationship they could uncover. In a day's time, we are also constantly changing our ideas about teachers' roles. We are not transmitters of knowledge, and then we know that we are observer of children's play, and then we know we are discoverer of children's plays. But now, we found that beyond observing and discovering, we are researchers. And we are co-constructor of a community together with children. So we observe plays, and we shoot videos. We study videos. Co-teachers open meetings. We engage in deep reflections. In Anji, we use high technologies. Cell phone is given a new function. Teachers use cell phones to observe children. We study children like anthropologists. We share the wonder, curiosity, and joy with children. Do you think our teachers are just like an anthropologist? We discover the relationship between children and environment, and we rediscover our relationship with children. We are always keen to observe. We now listen to children. And then we know what children are interested in. So we listen to the deep voices from children. We study our documentation. We listen to children's learning stories. We document their learning stories. We were keen in listening to children's reflection, children's meetings. Teachers are reflectors. Through reflection, we came to a deeper understanding of children. Look at our teachers. Our teachers were engaged in sharing with children. We focus on listening to children. We try. Very hard to truly understand children. Our teachers' role have been changed. In the past, we have so many subjective ideas, but now we finally understand children's feeling. And now we aim at truly understand the soul of children. And become the soulmate of children. This is what we are striving for. Not just studying children, we are studying ourselves. So high technologies have its new role. Teachers set up their cameras, their cell phones, to shoot videos and to shoot themselves interacting with children, studying their plays, research meetings, studying children, studying ourselves. At Anji, teachers' professional development and professional testing, 
professional competitions were no longer performances, singing or dancing or drawing, but analyzing children, understanding children. So we constantly change ourselves, deepen ourselves, deepen our thinking about children and materials. Can children learn from play? Do children only entertain themselves during play? We'll be anxious that we have repetitive plays. Shall we no longer have classes? Shall we have to design plays for children? Well, things have changed. Every day, teachers should spend at least one hour observing children's play, and we listen to children twice about children's stories. And every day, teachers must make time to watch our role teaching videos. So we believe a true play is true learning. We believe children can be well trusted. Our teachers can be trusted. Our teachers are no different from other teachers, but we can trust our teachers because they are very keen, very sharp, very sensitive at observing children. Vygotsky once said, in play, children's behavior is beyond their development areas, beyond a normal children. Children are noble in their place. That has given great confidence in our game and play reforms. We also deepened our understanding about play. We used to believe children were passive receivers of knowledge. Now we changed our concept. Children are active and smart thinkers. In the past, we worried how much things could children learn? But now we focus on children's thinking, ideas. We uncover their thinking. We make children's thinking visible. We make their causal relationship findings visible. Let me give you one example. In reflecting children's plays, we see children think during play. We see children document during play. If you don't know what is our play, children not only gain experiences through play, but they write down their experiences so they can materialize their thinking. So when children communicate their written symbols to their teachers, they convert from one language to another, convert the experiences into language, into verbal language. They recount the experiences. So children's expression was truly respected. Sharing after play is another level of sharing. Children come back to their classrooms, once again communicate their plays, they think deeper about their plays, and teachers can actually help them calm through the experiences. Children reflect on their plays with refreshed perspectives. We make children's archives hang them on the walls. Children flick through their archives, their diaries. This was written by teacher, documented by teacher. These were the drawings made by me. I now have a new thinking, new reflection about my prior play. See how many opportunities children have in reflecting their plays in the past. Look at this picture. When a child saw documentation of teacher of her play and her own documentation, she has the face of satisfaction, delight, and we were so moved. I have to skip some slides. Another breakthrough is to recreate the ecological environment of education. In the past, we have a solo play by teachers. In the process of reform, we found that the build-up of the 
ecological environment for preschool education is critical. Without which, our reform will not be vital. Will not be sustained. We are not in a solo play. We now have built a love-centered education system. So. This ecosystem can be sustained, can be put to the long term, can we really enact reform for the long term? We have built an ecological system for Anji Place. So when we observe children, we talk about the learnings in play. When teachers discover more, the more parents respect us. Then. Parents will not see us as nannies. When we communicate more, we gain more satisfaction from parents. And our government, whose goal is to provide education that satisfies people, the government is satisfied with teachers. So the government became more supportive of our education, of our teachers. We have built a healthy life cycle of education, and everything is planted because we have observations. We have play-based learning, so we can initiate such a wonderful, a healthy cycle between school, parents, and government. These days, many teachers came to visit our children, understanding. How our plays were unfolded, and we can see fundamental changes have taken place at the parental level and governmental level. Parents became guardians of children's play. Any reform without the support of parents would not be possible. So, in 2012, our local education bureau spent a hundred thousand RMB to print. Brochures to educate parents. So the first day, children were enrolled into our kindergarten. Parents were given a guideline. Teachers educate parents. What is the educational guideline? And teachers reflect with parents about their own place. In their own childhood. So when parents reflect on their own childhood, they can actually gradually understand the true value of play. Some parents may say, "Oh, these two these toys are, are very very dangerous, uh, and it doesn't look like meaningful. And these kids are like workers, uh, construction workers, uh, not like kids. Uh, this is not something the children should play with. But when we let the parents experience uh, these materials, they then feel the unique value offered by these materials. And our parents also get engaged in reflection after the play." They will also reflect on their play, and they share with each other. So when one parent was telling the story to the other parent, and she tried to redefine and refine her expression, so she felt that reflection was not an easy task to give a clear statement and description of what happened. is not an easy. Thing. So our parent also got opportunities to share his play story. This parent is a merchant of a small commodity goods. Look at his reflection, and he talked about cooperation and a love for life, and he also talked about the. Force mechanism in the physics, and our parents also shared a lot of、uh, their experiences and inspirations. So we let the parents、uh, get engaged to play with children together. In this process, the parents really got admired of the children, and they felt that the children are a master of、uh, play, and the parents and the children reflect together. 
the mom or the mother tells the story to the daughter, and the daughter reflects with the mom. Let this kind of joint experience to help our parents to understand the play of our children and understand our children better. So when the parents observe the play now, they open their heart to listen from their. Looks on the faces and look at their attitudes when they try to make the record. How careful and how close, how much attention they have been paying to the children, and we also ask our parents to look at, to watch the video and try to identify those、uh, observations in the play. And the parents can then feel the unique value of play, so that they can also be confident, and also be, they can be confident in guaranteeing and safeguarding the value of、uh, play. This is a community seminar we organize because we also want to spread the value of play to our community. From the slide, you can see that's the essence of an、uh, anti spirit, which is、uh, engagement, joy, risk. The participants are from the local. Communities. Some of them are from the government. Some of them are from the local farms as well. They come together to talk about how love can bring us together, so that we can safeguard the happy childhood of our children. In this process, we spread the love from kindergarten to our community, to the families. You can see that. This is、uh, actually the label we put on the gate of our beautiful rural areas、uh, building, and on this label it says that we should use love to educate our children, and the children be filled with love. So the love has been spread from our kindergarten to the community. We have established an ecology of love. For the children, I have been talking about what kind of skills will be needed to enable our children to be adjusted to the changing environment. What kind of skills are needed in 21st century? According to an international survey, ten skills. Are listed. The first one is complex problem-solving skills. In the play, there are so many different materials that can be combined in unlimited ways. So this is very challenging. Secondly, critical thinking. Our children reflect continuously during the day. They think during reflection. Critical thinking will be reflected and developed during the play. Creativity, people management skills. Our children are living in a small society when they play because if they want to play well, they have to manage their small mini society very well. Coordinating with others. If the children want to play well, they have to coordinate with other people. Every day, such cap capacities and skills are developed during play. Emotional intelligence, decision making, judgment skills. A very important keyword for anti-play is risk. So the children can take risks in their. Actions. They have to be responsible for their actions. They have to be responsible for any decisions made by them. So every day, every child is making decisions. Service orientation. When the ch child sees other people needs help, then they just、uh, reach out their hands, and they feel that when they help others, they are helping themselves. During this process, you would be able to see the love of our children everywhere. Negotiation skills. The Economist says that these ten skills are very important in the 21st century, but we wouldn't be able to translate or transfer these ten skills right into our kindergarten because maybe in another ten years, another Economist may say another ten skills are important. If we do things like this, it's not. 
enough. It's not correct. I think it's wrong to design our system this way. I think、um, our message to the world is that we believe true play is true learning. This is the right of every child. True play is a process and a foundation for children and the teachers to grow together and to learn together. And we observe children. The children observe the world, and they discover the world. So children will be the leader, will lead the process. They have unlimited potential. We should open the door and open the window for them. When we create such an environment, a parent, a teacher, an environment, a community, a country can truly support the learning and the growth of a child. That's all I want to say. I hope to listen to your feedbacks and reflections. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Chen, for your fantastic sharing. We all know that in the recent two decades, two decades, Anji has explored the play. They started with no play, and then forced play, and now true play. This is a reflection process. This is an action research process. They have been trying to go beyond themselves, and this changing process is a revolution. It's disruptive process because、uh, it changed、uh, many traditions、uh, which are still in place in many other places, and these traditions are regarded、uh, correct by some other people, and they also achieved a lot of dreams that used to be thought very very difficult to achieve. <laughs> 